Hi guys, it's me, Professor D. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, we're going to be going over Guillain-Barre syndrome. Now, before we get started, as always, I'm going to ask you to please support me and support this channel by liking this video. Please press that thumbs up button now so you don't forget you're going to love the video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And don't forget, I'm now offering a next generation NCLEX reviews, one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions, and consultation sessions. You can reserve your spot right now by going to my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And while you're there, be sure to check out the audio lessons I have available. Also, almost daily, you can find me covering a variety of uh, nursing topics across my other social media platforms, such as TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. So let's get into it. Guillain-Barre syndrome. And as you can see at the very top, I wrote demyelination. I, I, I spelled it wrong, but you know what I was trying to say, demyelination. So um, let me explain to you what's happening here. Did I spell that wrong? Demyelation. I'm not sure. Anyway, let me explain to you what's happening here, guys. So in Guillain-Barre syndrome, so you have a myelin sheath and that's the protective covering for the nerves, okay? That is what protects the nerves. Think about it. What do the nerves do? They transmit impulses. So if the nerves are no longer protected, do you think those impulses are going to be transmitted the way they should? Absolutely not. That is a whole pathology of what's happening here in Guillain-Barre syndrome. So take a look. So Guillain-Barre syndrome, this occurs a few days or weeks following a viral or bacterial infection. Let's stop right there. That is a famous test question, not only for nursing school, but for NCLEX as well. So they'll give you a situation where you know, the patient's been newly diagnosed with Guillain-Barre syndrome, or it's suspected that they have Guillain-Barre syndrome, what questions are you going to ask during the assessment? And the purpose is for you to understand that um, one of the correlations that we see is that the patient will develop it after they've had either a viral or bacterial infection. So you ask the patient, you know, have they had an upper respiratory infection or have they had some type of infection within the past couple of weeks or, or, or days, okay? Moving on. Uh, the main features of uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome include acute ascending. You see, I highlighted and put a star next to ascending. I'll explain that in a minute, but make sure you know it. Ascending, rapidly progressive, symmetric, so it's happening on both sides of the body, weakness of the limbs. Let's stop right there. Let's unpack. So with Guillain-Barre syndrome, the symptoms that we see, it happens from the bottom. So it happens from the feet and it moves up. It's ascending. It moves up. Okay. So it moves up and it happens very quickly. That's what they mean when they say rapidly progressing symmetric. So it's not going to be unilateral. It's going to be both sides, both legs, both arms. Okay. Symmetric weakness of the limbs. Reflexes in the affected limbs are weak or even absent. Respiratory muscles, I highlighted that. This is very important. Make sure you know it. Respiratory muscles may also be affected and some patients require mechanical ventilation. Guess what? This is the worst case scenario in Guillain-Barre syndrome other than death, right? Because can you live without breathing? No, because so this is one of our biggest concerns that that weakness that begins in the lower extremities and it creeps its way up, right? Our concern is that it creeps it way up, its way up to the lungs. Etiology and pathophysiology, this is very important to know. Unknown. We don't know the cause. We know that there's a strong correlation. Um, it happens very often after a bacterial viral infection, but we don't know the exact cause. Also, um, I don't see it on here, but Guillain-Barre syndrome, this is an autoimmune disorder as well. Did I miss that? Why is it not here? Anyway, this is an autoimmune disorder. I'm sure it's somewhere here in the book. That's important for you guys to know. As demyelination occurs, transmission of nerve impulses is stopped. Or slowed. I'll bring this down for you some more. Muscles inner, innervated by the damaged uh, peripheral nerves undergo denervation and atrophy. Again, guys, remember the nerves are responsible for transmitting those impulses. 
So in the recovery phase, remyelination occurs slowly and neurologic function returns in a proximal to distant pattern. Let's stop right there. That sentence just told us a couple things. So we have demyelination happening. We have weakness um, of the limbs happening and it's occurring from the bottom and it's ascending. But this tells us in the recovery phase, what does that tell us? That tells us that this is reversible, right? In the recovery phase, so the patient can re um, um, recover from this. In the recovery phase, remyelination occurs, but it occurs slowly. Remember how demyelination happens very quickly? It's rapidly progressing. Well, in the recovery phase, the patient starts to recover, but it happens slowly. And neurological function returns in a proximal, proximal from trunk distal away. Proximal to distal pattern. Most cases of Guillain uh, Barre syndrome follow viral or bacterial infection of the GI or upper respiratory tract. That's that's interesting because at the very beginning when we were reading about this, we saw that um, it followed a viral or bacterial infection, and now we're seeing it again. Remember what I told you guys when you're reading and you're seeing that the author's telling you something more than once, it's probably important to know. All right, clinical manifestations. What signs and symptoms we expect to see? The first symptoms are pain, paresthesia, numbness, tingling, and hypotonia. So the muscles really don't have much tone. That's your hypotonia, decreased muscle tone of the limbs. And remember, guys, this is something that's happening symmetrically. A reflexia, lack of reflexes, and weakness or paralysis of the limbs usually peak in about four weeks. Now, this four weeks is important to know when we come to medical treatment. Just keep that in mind. We're going to come back to this. Orthostatic hypotension, hypertension, and abnormal vagal responses are often seen. And you can also see other um, autonomic dysfunctions, such as bowel and bladder dysfunction, facial flushing, diaphoresis, where they're sweating all over the place. Facial weakness, paresthesia, extraocular eye movement difficulties, and dysphagia. I highlighted this for a reason. Difficulty swallowing. We're going to be concerned about that patient aspirating, right? Airway's a big deal. Look at this. The most serious complication of Guillain-Barre syndrome is respiratory failure, which occurs as paralysis progresses uh, to nerves that innervate the thoracic area. So we're going to be watching this patient very, very closely because, again, we hope that recovery begins before the paralysis hits, what, their lungs, okay? Assess the respiratory system frequently by checking respiratory rate and death to determine the need for immediate intervention, including intubation and mechanical ventilation. Diagnostic studies... Clinical features required for diagnosis include the progressive weakness of more than one limb. Remember, guys, again, this is symmetric. We've seen this at least three times already, okay? More than one limb and diminished or absent reflexes. Remember, areflexia. Cerebrospinal fluid analysis is helpful to exclude other causes. In Guillain-Barre syndrome, the cerebral spinal fluid will have more protein than normal. Medical management. Ventilatory support is critical during the acute phase. Patient may get plasmapheresis or high dose IV immunoglobin, and it's most effective when it's given to patients within the first two weeks of them displaying those symptoms. That is the best time for them to get this medication for the medication to be effective. After four weeks, remember I told you that four weeks is important. Take a look. After four weeks of the patient having the disease, that plasmapheresis and um, the Ig therapy is really not effective at all. It's most effective within um, the first two weeks, but after four weeks, it really has little value. Corticosteroids also have a little effect on the prognosis. Um, um, during the the um, disease state, I should say. That's not the word I'm looking for, not disease state. But um, during the, the acute time that the patient's having these manifestations, corticosteroids don't seem to help. You're going to report changes in motor function, such as, again, 
ascending paralysis. Guys, when you're reading and you see ascend, ascending paralysis, the first disorder that needs to come to your mind needs to be Guillain-Barre syndrome, okay? So you're going to report changes in motor function, such as ascending paralysis, reflexes, cranial nerve function, gag. Remember, aspiration is very important. We're going to watch out for that. Cornea, swallow, and level of consciousness. You're going to carefully assess the respiratory and cardiac function. You're going to be checking the ABGs. You're going to be checking, excuse me, the heart rate. You're going to be checking the patient's blood pressure. Vasopressor agents and volume expanders may be ne needed if the patient has um, low blood pressure. In addition to testing for the gag reflex, you need to know drooling another difficulty with secretions that may indicate an inadequate gag reflex. Early referrals should be made for physical occupational speech therapy and patients with Guillain-Barre syndrome will uh, start to recover spontaneously. And I put a note on the side that says, Hesse and Clex. I should put ATI as well because that's a famous question on ATI. That's very important for you guys to know um, that they will recover sp spontaneously. Our hope is just that they start to recover before it hits the lungs because our biggest concern is the respiratory status. And guys, something I'm going to I'm going to check on this and I'm going to put in the descriptive box because I'm very surprised. I don't see Gillian Barre. I see nothing about um, autoimmune, and I can also almost swear this is an autoimmune disorder, but I might be wrong. So after this video, I'm going to go look it up, and in the description box, I'm going to put if it's um, autoimmune disorder or not. Okay, because I don't want to leave that question hanging in the air. And on top of my head, I'm just having a brain fart. I cannot remember for the life of me, but I'll put in the description box. Anyway, guys, that's the end of this video. That is your Guillain-Barre syndrome. Most important things you guys need to know. Um, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already, and check out my website. Check out ch check out my website. Check out the audio lessons that I have available. And also, if you want to book yourself a tutoring session, a consultation se session, or you want to sign up for a Next Generation NCLEX review, part one, part two, I made it very, very affordable because I want each and every one of you guys to sign up, get this information so you can pass your test the first time. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. You guys catch me on the next video.